What's up, Spurs fans? Welcome to the first episode of GSG Nation. This is your brand new Spurs Fan Experience podcast. My name is Brandon, and I'll be your host throughout the Spurs Fan Experience. I'm a San Antonio native, born into the Spurs family, and I've been a member for over 30 years. I remember how electrifying the city and the fans were during our dynasty days. I remember selling Spurs shirts to you on the corner of Goliad and Pecan Valley from 2005 to 2014. I've been to first take during the finals. I've been to the finals games. I've honked throughout all downtown, and I've celebrated at the river parades just like you. This show started so we can bring that excitement back to the city of San Antonio. This show is a place where we can gather as a Spurs family with one common goal. And that's all about cheering the Spurs through the ups and downs. This is a place to get hyped about our beloved team and to stay positive throughout this rebuild. Here, we will talk about the growth of the team throughout the season, and we will also hear from the fans in attendance about the atmosphere at the Frost Bank Center. This episode, we will talk about positive skill sets of certain players and the possibilities the future holds for the team. Now let's get started with Jeremy Soshan. Now, even though the record shows that the Soshan experiment hasn't been working in order to win games, at least we can say that the guy has definitely improved individually. He's definitely showing improvement at the free throw line. And I know that everybody in the beginning of the season was laughing at the one-handed free throws. Clearly, the guy's free throw percentage last season was that bad that he needed to go back to the very basics of shooting with one hand at the free throw line. But with that said, all the the laughing is kind of over right now because almost a quarter away into the season, right now the guy's shooting 79% from the free throw line compared to his 69% last year. The guy has, has bought in to the system of changing his shot. Um, Didn't matter how embarrassing it was that he was going to have to go back to the shooting of the one-handed free throws in front of thousands of people on national television. But the guy's bought into it. It's clearly working. It's boosting his confidence. The laughing is stopped. So right there, there's already a plus in his game, which is awesome. And it's, it's actually really, really pleasant to see. Next up is Devin Vassell. Now, this guy, without a doubt, has been our most improved player in the best way possible for the Spurs. This guy is so fun to watch, and you could definitely tell that he put in a lot of hard work over the summer, and that contract extension is definitely looking worthwhile. After Wimby, Devin's the most exciting to watch on the team right now. You can clearly see each and every game uh, how he's getting better. You could just tell that he's working on certain moves in the gym and he's just putting them out there on the court. Um, It's been very, very fun to watch as a fan. Uh, I know that at the games, everybody's excited. We're all ready to see him come into the game. We're ready for him to join the starting lineup again. Um, But this guy is definitely going to be the perfect fit uh, for Wimby and for the Spurs going forward. He's going to, Definitely probably maintain being our top two scorer throughout our rebuild. Uh, But the great thing is, is that this guy is just getting nothing but experience. And you could just definitely tell that it's just improvement game after game. Uh, This guy, he wants to win. But most importantly, he he wants to improve. He wants to get better. He knows that he needs to get better. And he knows that there's going to be work that needs to be put in to get better. Uh, But you look at the guy in his post-game interviews, um, you know, just smiling, got his head up. You could tell, you know, hey, I'm frustrated with losing, but we're going to get this. We're figuring it out. Um, you know, he believes in the team. He says they're getting better. Clearly, individually, they are. And sometimes um, in certain units, you can tell as a team they're getting better. But Devin is a very, very exciting player to watch. I'm glad he's very young and that we're going to have him for many years to come and the thing is is that he's gonna he's improving so fast too at a young age that you know pretty soon he'll be reaching his prime before we know it and at that point yeah i mean he's gonna be um you know one of the top scorers in the league most likely at least and if not at least he's gonna fit perfectly for our team and i truly believe and as a spurs fan believe that he's gonna turn into a significant piece uh for a championship so let's move on to Keldon Johnson. Um, this is the Spurs' most tenured player, and it's been really fun and exciting to see him become a leader for the team. Uh, you could tell, you know, he's the one that knows the system the most. Uh, so he's going to, 
you know, one day he is going to turn into, um, you know, the floor leader, not necessarily the facilitator, but he's just going to know where everybody's spots should be. He's been really fun to watch. He's definitely uh, been a contributor to the team. Right now, he's third um, in points on our team, second in rebounds behind Wimby. You know, every game, this guy's out there bringing all the energy to the team, bringing uh, the excitement, kind of just getting, you know, the team, the guys ready and focused for the game. Um, so he's been really, really exciting to watch. And it's only natural, too, that he would take on the leadership role, you know, just being with the Spurs the longest. He's already been making a lot of hustle plays this year. That's going to be very beneficial going forward for the Spurs. This guy brings a lot of energy to the team on the court. And you can tell he's another guy that wants to continue winning. He wants to win. He, he wants this. He's focused. Uh, he does know the long-term goal. And he does know that there's going to be some ups and downs uh, throughout this season and to get to where they want to go. But the good thing is, is that this guy keeps his head up. Um, he's putting in the work with the others, and it's just great to know that we are going to have a leader on the team. So we're not sitting around here waiting, you know, who's going to lead lead these guys? Who's our leader? Well, that leader is Keldon Johnson, our man KJ. So there's been a lot of excitement coming from him and a lot of improvement to his game um, as well, and strongly believe that we're going to continue to see that improvement um, continue, you know, as we move further into the season don't expect this guy to get worse we're gonna see a lot of good things coming from him in the future uh so the future is bright for keldon i could see keldon being one of those sean elliott type players for the spurs just you know with the spurs for a very long time this guy knows the system like the back of his hand uh, he's gonna end up just being you know he's already a good fit for us he's what we need um in a leader because the leader doesn't always have to be the superstar of the team. I say this guy's going to be a great number three for the team, right behind Devin and Wimby. Perfect fit. Let's continue to root on for Keldon. Let's talk a little bit about Victor Wembenyama. So there's so much that can be said about this kid already. And let's just remember that he's only 19 years old. And he's already living up to the hype a quarter into the season already. There is so much upside with this kid, so many future highlights um, for us to witness coming up. As fans, it's going to be extremely exciting and enjoy what we're watching. Enjoy, and I say enjoy what we're watching in the sense as he's going to show us things that we've never seen before. And he's going to show us things that, you know, could come, could come in the future. So let's just sit back and enjoy the growth that we're going to witness from Wimby because right now he's just going to be playing freestyle ball, still looking for his game. He hasn't even played every single team, hasn't played at every single arena. He doesn't even know where his spots are, um, you know, at the at home, at home court at the Frost Bank Center. So right now, let's let's be a little bit patient. Um Let's learn his spots with him as his game continues to grow. Because it is just going to be such an exciting, exciting ride um, that we're going to be on witnessing his career. And once he does find those his spots, he's going to be unstoppable one day. And then once again, the San Antonio Spurs are going to be the dominant team in the league with the top player in the league, unstoppable player in the league. He'll be going on probably to make multiple MVP cases. So we're just in for one heck of an exciting ride. And I can't wait to witness it all with you guys. As fans, so much upside for us to look forward to right now. So there have been a few positive to Zach Collins' game as well. Uh, I think what what mostly stands out is his effort. You know, the guy being a little bit undersized at the center position, um, you know, going up against phys more physical bigs than him. At least we could say, you know, the guy's putting in a lot of effort. There are definitely games where, you know, he could hang his head um, out of frustration. Things aren't going his way, but no, um, it, it's really good to see him 
put in a lot of effort um, out on the court. You could even call him like the enforcer, one of the enforcers of the team, if not the enforcer of the team. So the aggression's there from Zach. And as long as that continues, um, you know, continues to happen throughout the season, you know, he'll have a spot on this roster for sure. Hopefully he learns um, a lot of things throughout the season. That way we can clean up some of those mistakes. Uh, one, another good thing from his game, too, though, he has been hitting some open three pointers. I know that, you know, a lot of us may not like to see him shoot too many threes, which is the case. And I know a couple of teams have left him open, um, you know, daring him to shoot. We're going to need him to shoot those shots with confidence and we're going to need him, you know, to continue to continue to shoot those open shots, because if he can hit those, which every team, you know, every winning team usually does have a semi three point shooting big, even though I wouldn't really call him wouldn't call him a three point shooter at all. And he's not going to be one, but at least the guy can make some of them and several throughout the game. So if he can continue to hit those shots, there will be times where he's going to hit big ones for us. And that can be very beneficial for the Spurs. Let's just continue to show our support for Zach Collins. Um, the guy's been doing a great job so far. And we're really proud of you, guy. And a couple of more players worth notice noticing would be Trey Jones and Chetty Osman. Um, looks like Trey Jones definitely seems to be a fan favorite. And we can clearly see that he is the better point guard, um, especially pairing up with Wimby. Now, of course, he is going to be the better point guard than Soshin because, you know, he's a true point guard. But there are a lot of um, so there are a lot of great things um, that, that could come from Trey Jones. Uh, one thing is that he knows championship level basketball, high IQ, high competition basketball. He comes from Duke. Uh, and you can't go to Duke without knowing that type of basketball, without having played it, proving it on the court. Um, and you can't go to Duke without playing defense. So Trey, which is clearly we see D Trey can play defense, um, you know, leading the team in steals. So there are a lot of pluses to Trey Jones's game. And I've seen him hit the big shot. So I know that this guy can fit with the team. And if he's not going to be our starter going forward he's absolutely 100 percent good enough to be our backup for the remainder of his career on our championship run i think that him you know being around the team already for about four years three four years he's you know learning the system he knows the system obviously more than than Soshin, and you know he knows the system best behind Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell. So it's going to be really, you know, a good idea for us to, to hold on to Trey Jones. I believe I absolutely believe he's good enough to stay with this team. And I hope to see him be a Spurs for a very long, long time. Last one to mention Chetty Osman. This was a great pickup for the Spurs. I truly believe this guy's got a great shot. We've, we've seen it already. He has confidence in his shot. Um, so he can be very exciting to watch, and he will be very exciting uh, once he starts hitting more of those threes consistently, as he's already proven that he can. And the good thing is that he's already got playoff experience before with the Cavs. So, you know, he's already bringing in a lot of knowledge um, and experience to the team and giving a lot of sharing a lot of knowledge uh, with the young guys. So once we're back on top again, once we're in the playoffs, making a, a push uh, and competing, uh, I believe that this guy is going to be, one, excited to be back into the playoffs. And I think that's going to refuel him once we get there. And he'll be able to help even the younger guys that aren't, that aren't even on our team yet. I think that he'll be able to coach and guide them throughout the playoff experience if we do reach it. And, you know, let's say we get another point guard. Um, that's very young or another forward or big that's, you know, very young and it's going to be their first, you know, playoff series. I think that Chetty, um, you know, could help, you know, guide them through that experience. So really excited that we have Chetty on our team and really excited to see him play with us going forward. I could see him being a Matt Bonner type for us, just a pure sharpshooter, uh, except that 
you know, Chetty drives the ball a little bit more, drives the ball better, and has a little bit more handles. So that's a little bit um, different than what Matt Bonner brought to us, but at least the three-point shooting uh, would still be there for them. And with the other young guys, you know, let's let's wait and see what, um, you know, what they can do, what more they can do. I know a lot of people um, like Dominic Barlow, and he's been dominating the G League right now. So, you know, if this guy can continues to go in that direction, hopefully we'll get to see him have some more playing time um, in the NBA with the Spurs. And then we can really see, you know, what his game is about from there. Julian Champagny, also fun to watch. Hopefully his jump shot, um, you know, continues to to stay consistent, continues to improve. Hopefully his confidence, uh, you know, will stay with him. But lots of excitement to come, uh, you know, from these young guys. So let's just sit back, enjoy what we're witnessing, enjoy the actual learning process, the growth, you know, just seeing our young guys like, mature and become, you know, men and a dominant team. Let's talk about what the future can bring, because honestly, the future is bright. It's very, very bright for this team. And it's very exciting. So, you know, we're already starting that climb up to the top of the mountain. We're no longer climbing down. We're no longer packing our bags, getting our gear ready. No, 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 no. We've now have at the bottom, started that climb to the top of the mountain. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait for this ride. Um, I cannot wait for us to get back to competing again. Just now let's remember rebuilds take time. If we think about it, though, we see that big picture, let's say five to six years tops. We're already competing again in a Western Conference Finals. I can absolutely see that here for this team. If we allow these core group of guys of, I'm going to include Trey Jones in that, with Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, obviously Wimby, and let's go ahead and throw in Jeremy Sochan because that seems like the direction that we're going to go with. I can see those core group of guys playing together for so long that they're going to know each other's game. Everybody's going to know their role once again, and we're going to utilize that to form the perfect team, to form a dominant team again. We really just got to let these guys play together a few more years because it does take time for the camaraderie to build. I mean, the good thing is, the good thing is we're not starting from scratch. You got Trey Jones, um, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, even Zach Collins. You know, these guys have already been playing together for not just two years, but three or more years. And that's exactly what we need in order to take us to the next level because all these other teams that are on the rise right now, obviously Denver Nuggets, Sacramento Kings, Oklahoma City Thunder, Indiana Pacers, all those teams have been at the bottom for so many years. I don't want to forget the Orlando Magic. Sorry about that, Orlando Magic. But all these teams have been at the bottom for so many years and now look where they're at. They're competing in the playoffs once again, starting to, you know, they're consistently beating past teams that have won championships. And that's all because these guys were at the bottom together for several years before they finally figured it out. They knew each other's game. Everybody knew everybody's spots. Everybody knew the system. Every You know, they created a system by being together for so long. And and now it's coming to fruition. So that's exactly the trajectory that the Spurs are on. And that's where we're that's where we're at. That's where we're going. There's no way this team doesn't start competing again within within the next five to six years, especially with the next generational talent like Wimby. We we're gonna find those pieces to fit with him. You know, we, we don't have everything right now and it's going to take a little bit. So let's just remember that this is a kid that's only 19 years old and there was just no way that we were going to start winning right off the bat. There was just, that was just not realistic, but it doesn't have to be 
necessarily a negative thing or a downer. This team is definitely not complete. Some players that we currently have are not going to be on our winning team. They're not going to be on our championship team. Some players right now um, that are playing college ball or overseas, you know, though there's somebody or a couple of people out there that are going to be on our team um, to help us go to that next level. And the good thing is, is that the Spurs have so many draft picks that we're going to be able to put that perfect team together piece by piece. And worst and best case scenario kind of of this season, let's say that we're back at the bottom again. At least we're getting another high draft pick. And with and with those draft picks, I do obviously see us looking for, you know, that next level point guard and um, and another big a uh, physical big. That way we don't have to turn Wimby into a physical big. Um, so we're going to you know, I think that we'll find somebody to compliment him more. That's going to, you know, bang on the boards. Um, You know, kind of like Collins is trying to, but we will get this team together. I know the losing streak has been terrible, but try to make it out to a game and check out how fun the atmosphere is at the Frost Bank Center. Well, Spurs fans, that's it for this episode. Thank you for joining me in finding the silver lining. Be sure to keep up with GSG Nation on Instagram and TikTok at GSG Nation, as well as on X at Talk GSG Nation. (laughs) 